Let's bring in uh, Drew Bledsoe, the former NFL quarterback, uh, former number one overall pick, and uh, was the star of episode one of Man in the Arena, the uh, docuseries about Tom Brady. Did you know you were going to be the star of episode one, Drew? Well, I haven't seen it. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, uh, no, I, I didn't know until right now that I was actually the star of that show. I thought it was about, uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, but it's about you and the early days when you got the injury and Tom takes over and Tom becomes the Super Bowl, uh, winner. Uh, so you have, you, I know you lived it, but you have no interest in watching this. Well, I mean, no, I'm not going to not watch it, but, uh, you know, I'm up here, I'm, I'm up making wine in Walla Walla right now. So I don't know, we'll see that, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll come on at some point and I'll, and I'll check it out. But no, man, it's, uh, you know, that, uh, I'm, I'm still great friends with Tommy and still proud of what he's done. Um, but I'm pretty well versed in the story. Uh, <laughs> that's not, I, I actually, I've, I've actually seen the movie. I was in the middle of it. Uh, but, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud of Tommy and, uh, you know, love everything about the kids. So I'll probably, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll watch it at some point. But I was wondering that you, you made yourself vulnerable. You made yourself available for this, but you made yourself vulnerable because you talked about you guys win the Super Bowl mm-hmm. and you go home, you're on the, the mountains, mm-hmm. you're skiing, and all of a sudden it hits you and you break down. Why did it hit you then? Yeah, you know, cause, well, I mean, you know, when you're when you're in the middle of a, of something like that, you know, you don't, you, you know, you're being a leader and you're, uh, um, you know, trying to do the right thing for your team, and you just have to be strong. You know, you have to be strong, and so I was, I was that through the through all of that, and then uh, once you get away from that, and you no longer have the responsibility of of uh, you know being a leader for the team and and uh, wearing all of that, and that all comes off, and now you don't have to be that responsible party anymore. Now you can kind of let it let it sink in a little bit. So, yeah, it was, I mean, it wasn't, uh, you know, that was a, that was a, that was a long and difficult year, but then also had a happy ending. And like, it just was like this most bittersweet thing ever where your team goes on and wins the championship, but, uh, but you're not on the field. Um, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was very happy for my squad and very sad for myself. But you help win the game against the Steelers in the AFC title game. What part of you thinks you're going to start in the Super Bowl? Because I only I think it was a week in between, or they didn't have the week in between, did they? Did you have the game Sunday and then Super Bowl was next the following Sunday? Yeah, the following week it was pretty quick, and I think uh, I think like Wednesday or Thursday of that week, uh, Belichick let me knew, let me know that uh, that he was going to start Tom in the Super Bowl, which. You know, that, that part was, you know, it's like, you know, if you're starving and somebody gives you a cracker, <laughs> you, know, you haven't played all year and uh, now you're now you're there and then you get to the top of the mountain you're in the biggest game that there is and finally got to play a little bit and uh, get back on the field. And uh, next thing you know, the, uh, the, you know, the other guys going back out there. Do you have any recollection of getting hit by Mo Lewis that day? You know, not really. I, I, um, I remember, you know, I remember kind of laying there on the sidelines and, and getting up. And then I just remember, uh, you know, I remember going back and going back in the game and, and uh, you know, I mean, I certainly wasn't all there. I had a, con- a pretty serious concussion, I think, in, in addition to the internal stuff. But I remember turning around and asking Mark Edwards, hey, Mark, how do I, you know, I knew I had to go left. Hey, Mark, how do I go left? He goes, say odd. I'm like, oh, yeah, odd, odd. And then we ran and played left. And then he went and he, went and, uh, he and uh, Damon Heward were the ones that ratted me out that I wasn't, uh, wasn't all there because I went to Damon to go over our two-minute plays. And our two-minute plays have been the same for years. You know, it would, uh, it would be, you know, like you coming into your show and asking, hey, which chair do I sit in? Uh, it's, it's kind of that kind of, uh, that kind of a simplistic thing. And so they, that's when they went and said, Hey, he's not, uh, he's not all there. And that's when they, uh, that's when they put Tommy in. And then, uh, after the game, I tried to go home. Thankfully the doctor didn't let me do that. But you had, I mean, if they let you go home. Yeah. If they let me go home, I would have died. I, I was bleeding out at about a liter an hour internally. And, uh, by the time they got me to the hospital, I was, I was out and they took a lot of blood out of my body. Thankfully, they uh, they were able to recycle my blood and put it back in, so they didn't have to uh, open my chest up. Um, but it was uh, it was touch and go there for a while. You're pretty nonchalant about this. No, well, you know I lived. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know whatever 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 doesn't whatever doesn't kill you, right? And, uh, uh, um, 
No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't know how serious it was, serious it was until two or three days after. So I wasn't really aware that there was that it was really bad until a few days later. Ever talked to Mo Lewis? You know, I never have. He's never sent me flowers. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, how about this? How about this? A Mo Lewis wine called Internal Bleeding. Oh God! Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just I, I is think it I, too I, soon? I, yeah, yeah, it's probably too soon. It's probably too soon. In, internal red. How about internal, internal red, red? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, that, that actually would be, pretty, that, would be, that would be interesting. That'd be interesting. What would you say if, if you saw Mo Lewis at one of these NFL functions? I'd give him a hug. I don't, I don't, I don't have any animosity toward him whatsoever. You know, and you, uh, you know, you open this segment talking about the roughing the passer stuff. Well, back that, that, that hit was not penalized and it wasn't illegal. You know, that was just the way that the game was played. I was, you know, I was heading toward out of bounds, but I wasn't out of bounds. He hit me. It was, it was a hard hit, but it was, uh, in that day and age was a clean hit today it would have been a, a targeting call and he would have been fined $50,000 and, and, um, and all of that. But, uh, you know, they've changed the game with, with the intent of trying to, you know, trying to keep quarterbacks in the field. Now they've obviously gone way overboard. I mean, you know, you run by a quarterback and look at him the wrong way and you hurt his feelings. It's 15 yards. Um, um, but, um, but do quarterbacks you know, want this Drew? Cause Brady said this is the reason why he's able to play at 44, but do you want it as a quarterback? You know, I, I I think that you know, as, and as a quarterback, I understand the the desire and the need to protect these star players because you you know you want them on the field, uh, but they've just they've gone too far with it. You know, I mean, you know the um, and I think that the the you know the hard part is I think for defenders, you know they they have to come in and they have to be thinking about you know not you know because I mean, they're going as hard as they can against the strongest dudes on the planet trying to get there and all of a sudden they get there and now when they get there now they have to stop and pull off and and it's uh so yes they've gone too far with it i understand the the intent of what they're doing but they've gone too far with it in my opinion and and um they've just made it almost impossible to uh, to play defense in a lot of in a lot of ways he's drew Bledsoe, former nfl quarterback former number one overall pick uh and I know you didn't come on to talk about your wine, but let people know about your uh, wine that you've been. Oh yeah, thanks, man. No, we, we're out here making uh, making wine in my hometown in Walla Walla. Um, we've got a kick ass team that is um, you know doing everything. We own our own vineyards and make the wine and deliver it. And we're you know I think they're making some of the very best wine in the world for us. So it's been a lot of fun. It's called Doubleback. If you want to find it, doubleback.com. Okay, if I want to sound like I know about wine. Mm -hmm. Give me some terminology here. Yeah. Um, so you want some really wine geeky stuff. If okay. you have a wine and you like it, and then it's like, you know, you can just say, you know, this is a complete wine. This is, um, mm. this has got great balance, nice structure, nice tannin, good fruit, you know, and uh, you can just say it's a complete wine and the wine geeks will leave you alone because then you'll sound like you really know what you're talking about. <laughs> Complex. Complex, complete. complete. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are you better at wine or quarterbacking? Oh man, you know, it's, they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways in that, you know, I was playing quarterback, I had a bunch of badass dudes that did the really hard work in front of me and fast guys <laughs> that would go get open. And then I got to take all the credit, right. You know, and, and, uh, and it's the same in this. I, you know, I, I direct a team that, uh, that just kicks ass and makes me look good. Is Mac Jones good or just in a good situation? Both, both, you know, he's, he's, um, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's accurate. Uh, working within the framework of a good offense, uh, but uh, you know that's the deal. I mean, in the in the in the NFL, uh, you know, you need all of it in order to win. Uh, and he's playing very well, uh, but he's also in a in a good system and in a on a on a team that looks like they're rising at the right time. But knowing Belichick, what do you think he says to Mac Jones, daily basis or on game day? She's, I don't know, not very much. You know, I mean, he he, he trusts his he trusts his uh, his staff to to work with him. Um, you know, he's far from verbose when it comes to coaching up the quarterbacks. But um, but you know, Mac is a guy that sounds like and they 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 do their research. They know what they're drafting. And they, you know, he's a guy that's working really hard, smart guy, doing all of the doing all the little things he has to do during the week. And then on game day, you know, you start as a quarterback. You always have to start with don't make a mistake first. Don't hurt your team. Uh, and he's doing that, which is which is uh, the most important part of the job. Uh, but then beyond that, he's throwing the ball accurately, getting it out of his hands. He's really doing a nice job. But so Belichick really is not involved in quarterbacks. 
You, you know, at least he wasn't uh, for the couple of years that I was there. He, you know, I mean, you know, we'd meet with him and he knows what's going on. And, and uh, I know Tommy, you know, met with him quite a bit over the years, just like early in, early in weeks. Um, you know, and there'll be little things here and there, but, but uh, you know, he really lets, uh, you know, Josh McDaniels um, handle that side of the world for him. And, and uh, so, yeah, I don't think he's probably not telling him the whole time. Yeah. I was wondering about that because if you're Brady and then you want out of there, like, can you have fun in there? Like, what what constitutes having fun that maybe Tom was missing in New England? <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, I mean, he stayed for twenty years. I mean, come on, let's, you know. I mean, it had, can't have been that miserable. Um, but he was you know, winning uh, and winning, yeah, and they were and they were winning and winning. Kind of cures everything. Winning's always fun. Uh, but uh, I remember Tommy did tell me a story a few years ago. I think they, it was like they'd been together seventeen years, something like that. And then he's like, "Hey, is Bill, is he kind of lightened up over the years?" And he goes, man, you know, there are times when, like, he'll walk by me in the hallway and not say hi. Like, he'll just walk <laughs> me in the hallway. You know, after 17 years, the most successful run of a quarterback and, and coach ever. And, you know, like, yeah, yeah, he's still kind of the same guy. He's just very focused, very business. But he, uh, no, you can have fun. I mean, come on, it's football. They had a lot of fun. Um, and Bill, actually, you know, he can lighten up and have fun. When yeah, everybody he, says that chooses to. I saw him at a wine deal one time, um, uh, right after we had started, and he came over. And brought Bears, his assistant. They came over and they were there, you know, sipping on some wine. He was laughing. He was joy. And I was like, man, who, who is this <laughs> imposter? And what have they done with Belichick? Because that's not the guy I played for. But he, uh, you know, he gets, uh, you get him outside of a football setting and he actually, uh, he actually can lighten up and have some fun. By the way, Drew has a, uh, a cab that just got 95 points. I think your cab got 95, right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, those wine critics. Oh, wine, here we go. Wine critics, wine critics and sports writers, they're all the same. Come on. Put no, them you... in a bag and beat them with a stick. <laughs> I, I always put it this way. They've, they've, been, they've, been really, they've been really good to us. The critics have been, but I always feel like we deserve more. But, um, but uh, no, they, they, the critics have been good to us, um, and uh, the wine sells fast. But I just always feel like our team has done such a killer job that they need more than 95 points. But you don't want 95 as a quarterback rating, do you? Um, well, I, you know, there were some times when I would have taken it, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, particularly in Buffalo when it's pissing down rain and blowing <laughs> sideways, so, you know, if I could complete two or three passes, I felt like I was doing pretty good. What made you want to go to Buffalo? Well, it wasn't my choice. They traded me to Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, but could you and, have said, I don't want to go to Buffalo? Uh, I could, I could have played, you know, hardball and oh, just okay. said I was going to retire or whatever, um, and done that, but. You know, I think the reaction, though, it's like everybody that goes to Buffalo, I think, has a similar reaction because nobody chooses that, right? You know, like, oh, I don't want to be exiled to Western New York and play in the rain and all that. But then once you're there as a player, it's it's awesome. I mean, I, I loved playing there. I think most guys that end up going there end up really loving playing there. The fans are fantastic. Um, the weather is atrocious. Um, but it's it's really a cool place to play ball. It's like playing pro ball in a college town, you know, and uh you know, so it's kind of funny because I, you know, I don't know how many people ever choose to choose Buffalo as a free agent, but um, but once you get there, it's pretty awesome. Great to talk to you. Uh, are you featured in any more of these episodes? Or are you one and done with uh, Tom Brady? I truly have no idea, Dan. I really don't. I my 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 guess is probably just the one because then they they move on and. Uh, but uh, um, but I don't know. I'll have to go check it out. Was Brady a better beer chugger than you? He actually was pretty fast. I, I, you know, I never, I was never very fast drinking beer. It was, you know, it was, it was more of a, a slow volume game. But uh, yeah, Brady, <laughs> he, could, uh, he, could, he could back in the day. He could, he could, uh, he could, he could shotgun a beer pretty fast. Ross Tucker talks about Brady as an old timer. Yeah, no, he was, he was, he was, he was pretty good at that. Now, I mean, you know, now he doesn't even drink at all. I think he has a little bit of red wine in the off season. He actually did. I. You know, we couldn't ship wine to Massachusetts for a long time, and so I sent his first shipment of wine. I sent it to his dad in California, and his dad drank it all. The way <laughs> uh, but I think he, but I think he will have a glass of wine every now and then. Um, you know, maybe in the off season. But uh, I don't know. I wonder when the last time was that he actually had a beer. I, I really have no idea. Well, might have been on the boat. Yeah, it sounds like he had a lot of something when he was on the boat. <laughs> but I, I don't know if that was beer. Yeah, it sounds like it was tequila. Uh, hey, great to talk to you again, as always, and uh, good luck with the cab, and uh, thanks for joining us. You got it, buddy. I'll come see you next time I'm in uh, Connecticut. Yeah. Stop by. Stop by for a meet Friday. 
Okay, we'll and, do. And bring wine. We'll do. Okay, I'll do it. thank you, bud. That's uh, Drew Bledsoe, the former NFL quarterback. Yeah, he stood out episode one with uh, the docu series about Tom Brady, Man in the Arena. <laughs> 